Harden they gather, and he buries it. James Harden, the former league MVP, turning the clock back here in South Philly. Welcome back, James Harden. Coming into this game, he had just 10 points combined in the first three games in the second half. Hello, put on a clinic, made six threes in the game, had 16 in the fourth, 18 in the second half. Sean Powell to the people. Chris Miles here with you on Playoff Central Live. So we've had two games today. We got two series tied at two games apiece, and it was James Harden throwing up the peace sign, hitting those threes. Well, you know, we had the Houston Harden and the Brooklyn Harden and the Philadelphia Harden. Now I think we saw a little bit more of the Houston Harden tonight, and I think it when Philadelphia really needed that in the fourth quarter, the score started to get a little, little tight. It's refreshing to know, at least for this one game, that when Philadelphia turned to James Harden, he could produce like he did in Houston and, and Brooklyn. Uh, up until this point, he's been more of a facilitator with the Sixers, and Joel Embiid had been imploring him, hey man, play your game, play your game. The problem was his game in Philadelphia had changed a little bit. But I think he needed a throwback for himself. You just saw the reaction, Chris, when he started hitting those big shots. He needed that for himself, too, in addition for Philadelphia. Well, and it was the timing of it because you mentioned Joel Embiid got off to a crazy hot start, 15 points in the first quarter. And then it was the Miami Heat defense that changed to a zone. They were fronting the post. You had Victor Oladipo, you know, getting the steal guards out there, fronting the post and stopping Joel Embiid. And that's when James Harden, in the second quarter, he scored 13 points. And in the fourth quarter, when Embiid couldn't get it going, it was James Harden stepping up. When they made the trade at the trade deadline, this is what was expected the symbiotic relationship between these two guys. But you're safe to say this is the first time we've seen it come to fruition in a postseason. Well, in five of his last nine games, he failed to score 20 points. And his, his entire time with the Sixers, he never took 20 shots. And what, he had 18 tonight, so he came close enough. And again, when you look at James Harden's career, after the, he left Oklahoma City, he's been a big-time scorer in this league. Uh, probably just as well as anybody else. Uh, but when he came to Philadelphia, for whatever reason, he was a little bit more meek, particularly in the playoffs in the fourth quarter. He's just a little bit shy and everything. Look, he is their, he is their best passer, so they do need him to facilitate. He's a much better passer than Tyrese Maxey. Tyrese Maxey is not a pure point guard. But as I said, when they need James Harden to step up and score, he needs to do that, and tonight he did, and I think the Sixers, this is a good sign. Now, Chris, the trick is, does one game just make you ignore all the other games? Is this a, did he turn the corner, or is this sort of like, you know, just a temporary thing, and then he'll revert back to a guy who's yielding too much to Joe Embiid, yielding too much to Tyrese Maxey, and not stepping up in the fourth quarters. At least this is a bright spot for Philadelphia. Hey, look. This, this series is tied 2-2. And a lot of people probably thought that, you know, Miami would win in five games, maybe a sweep because we didn't know Joel Embiid would play. But the other positive part of this game is, aside from James Harden, Joel Embiid was forceful. I mean, he played a lot of heavy minutes. He wasn't shy about possibly getting hurt wearing the mask or anything. He was forceful defensively, offensively. This is a, a good sign because from here, you figure that he's only going to be more forceful in getting back to the Joel Embiid, who was an MVP candidate during the season. Yeah, Joel Embiid, 24 and 11. He had 18 and 11 in that game three when he came back. But like you said, there was a different presence from Joel Embiid, especially coming out with those 15 points in the first quarter. But let's talk about three point shooting because Jimmy Butler. Uh, I'm sorry, James Harden made six threes. The Miami Heat, as a team, made seven. That's really where you look at it and you go, okay, see, Hugh, the biggest difference in this game because Miami came in as the, you know, best three-point shooting team in the league by percentage, and it was the Philadelphia 76ers that had the true advantage there tonight. Yeah, well, if you're Miami, you know, Tally Hero struggled a little bit. Duncan Robinson is not even playing. You know, he's on the bench. 
So, and then Victor Oladipo also kind of struggled a little bit. Now, to be fair to Victor Oladipo, he really hasn't played that much uh, for Miami this season. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, it's a make-or-miss league. Philadelphia had the attempts. They had the cleaner looks. They made them. And in a tight game, those three-pointers start to add up, and it possibly makes the difference between winning and losing, and it did tonight for Philadelphia. Well, let's go back and look at that game four and all the pivotal plays as, again, it's the Philadelphia 76ers tying this series up at two games apiece. And their former teammates, don't forget Jimmy Butler, Joel Embiid, all pleasant things for those two guys to say to each other before this one. And Embiid, like I said, catching a pass in the post from Harden. Then Embiid, the bank is open on Mother's Day. Yeah, aggressive. And, you know, the hardest thing to do when you're wearing that mask is to see from deep. Didn't have a problem right there, making that three-point shot. All three facets in the mid-range as well. I told you he had 15 in the first quarter. But on the other end, Miami getting downhill. Kyle Lowry finds Bam out of bio. We're tied at 32. And there's Harden. Once he hit that one, you could sense yep. the confidence was building. Then Danny Green has been red hot. The three and the free. Philadelphia takes the lead. Jimmy Butler, the complete offense all night for Miami. Yeah, I think Jimmy Butler, his first two rounds here in this playoffs, I think it's better than his first two rounds in the bubble when he led Miami to the NBA Finals. And B, the crossover, jump shot. That's that Drew Hanlon work you see there. On the other end, they get it around the horn. And like I said, Miami struggled from three-point range. Jimmy Butler hit two of them. Then Butler inside. He was magnificent in that third quarter. But you said Embiid's presence, that's the play I think of, the block on Marquise Morris. He, he was aggressive. And again, you'd like to see that from Embiid. It, initially, he was tentative with that mask, but, but right now, I think he's closer to the MVP candidate than Embiid. And that's the reaction you were saying from James Harden when he had the crowd behind him. Bam out of bio, working to keep it close in the fourth and one, but Harden. Ready to go night night? No hesitation. For three, then it's the step back three for Harden, his 45th 30 point playoff game. But this one felt different. It, it, it felt pure. And again, you just look at his reaction, you know, it's very animated. He felt, uh, I think, a huge burden lifted from his shoulders to finally get that game and not only get the game, a game that they needed, they didn't want to fall behind uh, in this series, and also a game at home because you had a lot of skeptical Philadelphia fans wondering, hoping, praying for the James Harden that they saw in other uniforms, in Brooklyn's uniforms, Houston's uniform, now they see it in Philadelphia's uniform. Now those 45, 30 point playoff games I told you about, third most amongst active players behind only LeBron and KD. Puts in perspective the kind of career that James Harden